we present Herbert Marshall as the man called X, a regular weekly feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama, transcribed for you by Chesterfield, the cigarette that has for you what every smoker wants, mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste, the cigarette that brings you Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. By the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. <laughs> Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Uh-oh, here are those two guys again. Say, Bing, you got a minute? Oh, sure, Bob. I got all the time in the world. Don't tell me you own that, too. Oh, never mind that stuff. Get to work, will you? Okay. Folks, better tasting Chesterfield is the only cigarette that combines for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. And you can prove that yourself. Just make our mildness test. Buy Chesterfields, then open them and enjoy that milder, mellow aroma. Now light one up, and you'll know Chesterfield's milder because it smokes milder. And Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. That fact has been confirmed by the country's first and only cigarette taste panel. Yes, mildness and no unpleasant aftertaste are what you and I and every smoker wants. Hurry up, Dad. Here comes the music. By Chesterfield, Chesterfield, the one that proves its case. Yes, Chesterfields are milder, milder, plus no aftertaste. Oh, ho, open a pack and give them a sniff. Then you'll smoke them. to the Italian border, the Maritime Alps push almost to the sea, forming a narrow 50-mile strip of beach and crag known as the Côte d'Azur of the French Riviera. Here are assembled the dissolute and the disenchanted, the rich, the noble, the greedy, by day lounging at the edge of the blue Mediterranean, at night cramming the casinos, pushing forward their chips with trembling fingers. Only at dawn is the wild clamor of desperate gaiety silent. At dawn, the game is over. But in the garden of a villa just inside the borders of the tiny principality of Monaco, another game is in progress. And the stakes? Death. Two men stand back to back, small antique pistols in their hands. Gentlemen, you know the rules. When I begin to count, take five paces, turn and face one another. Then you may fire at will. An aging British novelist counts off the paces. Three, four, five... A paunchy, mustachioed Egyptian prince turns, takes careful aim, and squeezes his fat finger against the trigger. <laughs> a young American playboy lies sprawled across a flower bed, a red stain slowly spreading on the pleated white of his evening shirt. Mark, you killed him! You murdered her! You killed Mark! Here's another one, Ken. This time it's the Tribune. Want to look at it? No, thanks, Chief. I've read enough of them already. Playboy scion of wealthy senator killed in duel. Shocking disregard for moral standards. Fight over married woman shows depravity of the international set. That's about it. The whole thing just not It just doesn't add up, Chief. Mark Whitney wasn't the kind to get involved in a foolish mess like that. What's more, he had a serious job in his hands. Sure, Ken. Whitney was a good man. One of the best the Bureau ever had. But around those crazy people, anything could happen. But even a crack marksman missing a 300-pound target at 10 paces? Oh. You think the duel was faked? Oh, well, well. Where's that last letter we got from Whitney? In the top drawer there. Uh, I'm heading for the Riviera for a rest. Hope to fish for some channel bass. We'll try to catch a big one. That's right, Ken. He had a crude lead. Sure, but there aren't any channel bass along the Riviera, Chief. Hmm? Except the kind who channel information behind the Iron Curtain. What? Well, wait a minute. You think Whitney was onto something hot? Could be. Could be that he hooked into a whopper when they pulled him overboard. Oh, no, Ken. There were too many witnesses. R. Clifton Lockridge, the novelist. That actress, Rhonda DeValle. She's Prince Hakim's wife, remember? I know, but she seems to have been in love with Whitney. Ken, people like those don't lie to cover up a cold-blooded murder. Uh, maybe not. 
Maybe it's just a crazy hunch. But the last time I was in Monte Carlo, I found the best system for gambling was to play your hunches. Now hold on, Kim. So long, Chief. If I win at roulette, I'll cut you in. Monsieur Thurston, welcome to Monte Carlo. Uh, oh, hi, Olio. I expected to see you up front. Ah, monsieur, I have been promoted since you are last in Monte Carlo. No longer am I the bouncer. Now, I am assistant manager. <laughs> Number three. Uh, and you, monsieur, what brings you to Monte Carlo? I felt lucky and decided to play a few hunches. Besides, I came to settle the estate of a friend of mine. Perhaps you knew him, Olio. Mark Winsley III. Oui, oui, oui. I knew him, poor boy. Had I known how it would end, I would have let them finish the fight here. Huh? Well, did they have a fight at the casino? Mais certainement. It was magnifique. First, the American sinks his fist in the prince's stomach, all the way to the wrist. Yeah. Then the prince knocks him down and jumps on him. Then the American rolls him over like a ball. Ah, I hated to break it off. Oh, sure. Did you happen to know how it started? Alas, no, mon ami. I arrive when things are already going good. The American sinks his fist yeah, into... Yeah, you, you said that. Is there anyone who might have seen the fight begin? Oui, Georges, the croupier. Young Whitney, the prince, his wife. They were all playing at Georges' table. I can call him over if you like. Oh, don't bother. I'll have to spend these chips somewhere. As you say, mon ami, the first table on the right. It was you, madame and monsieur. It was you. Merci, monsieur. Uh, where shall I place your wage, huh? Any number you choose. <laughs> I do not bet, monsieur. I know the odds too well. I'm betting you know a great deal more than that. Perhaps I do. A friend of mine had a quarrel here last week. I'm curious about it. Curious enough to double my stakes. Monsieur, I watch the wheel. The faces of the players come, go, change. I do not notice. Faites vos yeux, madame monsieur. His name was Mark Whitney. Well? You lose, monsieur. Take my advice. Do not gamble anymore. You are sure to lose. Someone has to win. I've always been pretty lucky. The percentages are against you, monsieur. No matter what the stakes, money, information, life even. Take my advice. Leave Monte Carlo before you lose more than you can afford. Remember, the percentages are against you. Thanks for the tip. You move, Auntie. Wait, don't move. I have to talk to you. Huh? What month were you born in? I know, December. Oh, well, yes. I knew it, a Sagittarius. I could tell it the minute I looked at you. I need a Sagittarius in my orbit. Yeah. The stars are just right for it. I do everything by the stars, you know. You've got to come to my party tomorrow night. Oh, that's very kind, but I'm afraid... I'm I... Mrs. Farrar, you know. Helen Farrar, you must have heard of me. My party is a world yeah, famous. I, I've heard of you now. Just... I do hope you're coming tomorrow. <laughs> of course, it won't be anything elaborate. Just a little get-together at my villa. A few games of chance. No one really important. Except, of course, dear Rhonda and Baby. Baby? Prince Huckham, you know. We all call him Baby because he's so fat, of course. Of course, that follows. I heard you mention being a friend of poor Mark. I do hope you won't hold it against Baby. It wasn't his fault. No. Rhonda's been disconsolate ever since. So has Baby. So have I. Yes, and it must have been pretty hard on your business. I, I don't know what you mean. Don't you? Or has giving parties become so profitable that you've abandoned your little sideline of... Just a minute. As I recall, Mrs. Farrar, was it? When you left the United States two years ago, it was to avoid prosecution on several counts of blackmail. I've never been so insulted in my life. Good night. Oh, uh, Mr. Thurston. Huh? Don't forget about the party. How could I? After all, it was written in the stars. <laughs> That Sagittarius Helen's been babbling about. Name's Thurston, isn't it? That's right. It's our Clifton Lockridge. So you might as well call me bitters like the rest of them. You see, I'm supposed to have a dry wit. I haven't, but fortunately, in this rarefied strata of society, a small amount of nastiness passes as a great deal of humor. 
I've always found your books amusing. Thank you, so have I. Uh, come along, Thurston. You may as well meet the rest the of the menagerie. An eight for the cater. Who says he'll make it? Eight's the point. Uh oh. <laughs> Imagine having a craps table at a private party. Like to try your luck, Thurston? Not at that table, thanks. Excuse me a minute, will you? How about a latch, the prince? What will you. Oh, hello, Mr. Thurston. Hello, Pagan. Here. Let me have a try at those dice. Oh, yes. Just as I thought. Blooded for beer, eh, Mr. Thurston? There you go. Oh, they're not mine, Mr. Thurston. How could you think such a thing? They belong to my cousin Pierre. He works at Monte Carlo. Oh, sure. <laughs> Besides, who wants to get rich? I just came to the Riviera because you were here. All right, Pagan. Who told you this time? The chief secretary again? Who else? <laughs> Mr. Thurston, stop staring. It isn't polite. Especially when I don't know what you're looking at. Over there at the back of our table. Oh, the pretty petunia. <laughs> That's Rhonda de Valle, the Italian actress. Oh, she's the one Mark Whitney... Well, come on, Mr. Thurston, what are we standing here for? Easy, Pagan. That's her husband. The fat character in the uniform? Oh, don't be silly. What could she see in here? Prince Hakim Raid is one of the richest men in the world. Well, I don't see what... Oh, a marriage of connivance, eh? Something like that. Come away from the table, Rhonda. You've lost enough. I lose what I like. A million francs, two million. You can afford it. If it doesn't please you, go home. I'm staying. Oh, how can she talk that way to all that money? Rhonda, we will leave together. Take your hands off me! <coughs> and go out for some fresh air. Hey, Mr. Rex, where are you going? Out on the terrace. See you later, Pagan. But, Mr. Thurston. Here, here. You better try my handkerchief. Oh, God. I'm sorry, but it's all been so frightful, like a nightmare of hatred and jealousy and murder. Was Mark murdered? What else can you call it? Rhonda, who told Hakim about your interest in Mark? Must have been Helen. Helen Farrar. She knows too much and tells everything. Unless you pay for her silence. And then you have to pay more and more, all the money I... Oh. Huh? Won't you introduce me oh. to your friend, Rhonda? Of course, darling. This is the Mr. Thurston Helen told us so much about. My husband, Prince Hakim. Prince Hakim? You will forgive us, Mr. Thurston. My wife is overwrought. It's time she went home. Isn't that right, Rhonda? Yes. I'm tired. Very tired. Good night, Mr. Thurston. We'll meet again. Soon. I'm sure of it. Good night. Quite an actress, isn't she? Hmm? Oh, hello, Lockridge. Didn't see you there in the shadows. Well, I suppose I should have spoken up when you and Rhonda came out, but I enjoy eavesdropping. It's a novelist's prerogative, you know. Uh, you'll have to forgive Baby, by the way. These Egyptians take their women so dashed seriously. I gather that. Yes, Mark. Funny thing about that business. There are always men hovering around Rhonda. Baby's challenged three or four of them, but he's always backed out, apologized. I decided he was something of a coward, and then he finally goes through with a duel against a known crack shot who, by some strange coincidence, misses his aim completely. If it was a coincidence... What? Oh, oh yes, yes, now that you mention it... Uh... Oh, uh, yes. Hey, Mr. Thurston, wait for me. I do want to walk home. Okay, Pagan, hop in. What a party, Mr. X. I haven't had so much champagne since my sister Olga got... Hey, Mr. Thurston, looks like you got a ticket. Hmm? Oh, See, stuck under the windshield wiper. Here, I'll get it. If you need it fixed, my cousin has some good connections. Hey, this is some kind of a note. Let me see it. If you are truly a friend of Mark Whitney's, come to Eden Rock by 1.30 this morning. Huh. Block printing, no signature. Eden Rock? <gasps> Garden of Eden! Let's go. Hang on to your head. We haven't got much time. Take it easy, Mr. Rex. If I gotta go to the Garden of Eden, I don't want to get there in one place.
Well, there isn't anybody here, Mr. Rex. Guess she must have gotten cold feet. Shoot that flashlight down there onto the rocks. Sure. Why, <gasps> Mr. Rex? Yes. Oh, poor Prince Hakim. Oh, all that dough, and he has to go and, and fall off a cliff. Pagan? I've got a hunch he was pushed. <laughs> We will continue with The Man Called X in just a moment. If you would like to know a quick, easy way to ease the pain of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, then by all means try Anison. Your own dentist or physician may, at one time or another, have handed you an envelope containing Anison tablets. Then you already know how incredibly fast and effectively Anison brings relief. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients. For your own sake, try Anison. Anison is sold to you on this guarantee. If the first few tablets do not give you all the relief you want, as fast as you want it, you may return the unused portion and your money will be refunded. You can get Anison tablets at any drug counter. Anison comes in handy boxes of 12 and 30 tablets and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. Now, Act Two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. Why do we have to climb all the way down here, Mr. X? He's dead anyway, isn't he? Uh, well, then? I'd just like to see if... Shoot. Yes, he's already been searched. Nothing on him. Well, what are we waiting for? It's cold and, and I'm getting wet. Wait feet. a minute. Look at his head, Pig. Hmm. Bold as a billiard cue. Yeah. But, Mr. X, in a casino he had black hair. Maybe he got so scared it just all fell out. Oh, well, maybe he wore a toupee. Give me that flashlight. Let's see. Yeah, there it is. Up on this rock. How do you like that, Mr. X? Oh, it just shows you can trust nothing you see. <laughs> Why, I bet you that... What are you doing? Where'd you get a piece of paper? Fastened inside the toupee. Huh? Red 38, red 21. If you lose... Cut stakes in half. Red seven, black four. It's a system for playing roulette, Mr. X. Hey, maybe that's that's how the Prince Hakim got so rich. Not with this system. Come on, Pagon. Let's get back to the casino and lose some money. Sure. Huh? Lose? But Mr. Rex. Come on. <laughs> Red 36, red 21. Hey, what's that sign up ahead? Hmm? Oh, detour. <laughs> Just like back home, eh? Now, where were you? Oh, yes. Red 36. Mr. X, look out! Hey, what kind of a detour is this anyway, hmm. bringing us right to the edge of the cliff? A very special detour, Pagan, meant Just for us. For us? Yeah. Let's get back on the highway. Room for another player at this table? Hello, Thurston. Planning to lose a little money and supplement the Marshall plan? Uh, looks like Mrs. Farrar's party has moved to the casino, Lockridge. My party was a bore, darling. I should have known. I've told myself a hundred times, never entertain unless Saturn is in conjunction with Mars. And look where Saturn is tonight. Where was he? I never saw oh, Shut up. Oh. There seems to be somebody missing, though. Perhaps you mean my husband, Mr. Thurston? Yes, Rhonda. I thought you went home with him. Bibi was in one of his moods. We quarreled again. He let me off here. It was you. It was you, Monsieur Thurston. I'll play Red 36. Yes. Numero du noir, two black. You lose, monsieur. Uh, let's try uh, 21, red. 
21 right. What? Again. With one, eight, black. Mr. Thurston, that's, that's money you're losing. Maybe four is my lucky number. Let's find out. This noir, ten, black. Oh, I can't stand to watch anymore, Mr. Thurston. All this money going out and, and nothing coming back. Fourteen, red. Cans noir, fifteen, black. You lose again, monsieur. Well, I guess that does it. Let's see. Five hundred thousand francs. Five hundred thousand? <laughs> Even in France, it's money. Afraid I'll have to give you a check. Oh, I'm very sorry, monsieur. I... All of you will accept it. Well, I do not think so, but I shall get it. Don't look so sad, Pagan. We'll drive out to Eden Rock and watch the sun come up. It's supposed to be quite a sight. Huh? Perhaps you'd like to come along, Mrs. Farrar, Rhonda. Well, uh... uh... You want Rodeo, monsieur Thurston? Uh, yes, I lost quite a bit tonight, and I'd appreciate it if you'd take my check. Oh, but monsieur, it is against the rules, even for you. That's too bad. It's all made out. Here. Yeah. But I don't, uh... Uh, bien, bien. I will make an exception. Thanks. Good night, everybody. I hope you enjoy the view from Eden Rock. I expect to. Good night. What are we doing out here, Mr. Rex? It's dark as a coal bin, and the prince's body is still down at the bottom of the cliff. Take it easy, Pega. And you didn't tell nobody he was even dead. Whoever murdered him already knew it. Well, sure, but but this is no... You lost money, too. It was a good investment. Huh? That wasn't a roulette system on that, that slip of paper. It was a code. How did you know? It said to cut your bet in half if you lose. No gambler ever does that. You'll never get even. If you were sure you were going to lose a... At I... least one of the other players knows that same code. The one who murdered Hakim. I made it plain we were coming here, so we ought to have a visitor before they... they... Well. Good evening, Mr. X. Am I prompt enough for you? Right on time, Princess. Then you are not surprised. No. Hakim's body was successfully... Well, it was searched very carefully. But whoever killed him knew he was bald. Otherwise, they'd have been puzzled and searched for the hairpiece. Poor baby. So vain about his hair. As if that wig covered his ugliness. And what else have you managed to deduce, Mr. X? Not enough, I'm afraid. I thought maybe you'd help me. The code was used for passing information to a Russian agent, wasn't it? Yes. To the croupier. Uh, one thing I don't understand. Why you and the prince would be mixed up in a thing like this. Money, Ronda? For me, yes. For him, power. His grandfather was one of the strongest men in Egypt. Baby hoped to recoup his strength. The communists made him promises. And you? I told you. I can believe in giving a woman nothing. I had to beg for every penny. But the communists pay well. Much better than you rich Americans. Unfortunately, Baby was disturbed. I am afraid he did have a conscience. He wanted to talk to you. Mrs. Farah had told us who you were. I could not permit him to see you. So you killed him? What was Baby disturbed about? Mark Whitney's death, of course. He had finally managed to figure out it was murder. Hmm? Baby was such a coward. It took me days to get him to challenge Mark. Go on. With a little pressure from Coupier, Mark accepted the challenge. Perhaps if he had known his revolver was loaded with a blank... Whitney was killed because he found out about this code of yours. You are right again. <clears throat> so... Oh, put that gun away. Killing us wouldn't look like an accident. I have no intention of firing. Unless you force me. Now, if you will just back up to the edge of the cliff. Mr. X, I don't think she's kidding. Sorry, Rhonda, I'm not moving. Then I must kill you. I have no choice. You can turn yourself over to the police. They're almost here, you know. What? The check I gave Olio tonight was a message to bring them. He's quite good about following instructions. Learned it in the Foreign Legion. I... I do not believe you. Car's turning in. No, it is not possible. I, I will get away. Back to Italy. The party will help me there. 
It is only a few kilometers to the border. I will be... Rhonda! Oh, oh, Mr. X. Mr. Thurston, the police are here. I have followed your orders. Not much they can do now, Julio. Except pick up your croupier and hold him for espionage. Yeah, but the Princess Ronda. Down there. On the rocks. Ah, it was an accident? Oh, no? no, I wouldn't say it was an accident, Olio. I'd say she died of natural causes. All this happens to people who are infected with greed and the desire for power. Oh, well. Come on, Pia. Our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall, will return in just a moment. Here's a word from RCA Victor. It's good company anywhere. Yes, anywhere, anytime, there's fun at your fingertips with an RCA Victor portable radio. At home or away from home, on your bedside table or at the beach. It's great to own the pick of the portables and RCA Victor. You'll enjoy that extra range. You'll rave about the tone thanks to RCA Victor's exclusive golden throat tone system. Yet your RCA Victor portable boasts a compactness and lightness you never dreamed possible. Most important of all, you get the strongest reception ever achieved on battery operation. Because RCA's radio batteries are tube rated and radio engineered for long, strong listening life. Yes, on every count. An RCA Victor portable radio is good company anywhere. Take your pick of the beautifully styled models at your RCA Victor dealers everywhere. Now, here again is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Those you heard in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan... Gene Tatum, Will Wright, Tony Barrett, Gerald Moore, Eric Snowden, and Ted Von Eltz. Next week, Ken gets involved in an operation that literally knocks him off his feet. And between a famous doctor, a pretty nurse, and Leon Belasco as Pagon Zellschmidt. Well, join us, won't you, when next time we turn as the man called X. Good night. Called X is a regular weekly feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Transcribed for you by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. Tonight's story was written by Robert Libbett and Frank Burt. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Be sure to hear The Big Show with Tallulah Bankhead and a great parade of stars, the Sunday night feature of NBC's All-Star Festival. And until next week, same time and station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. William Bendix stars in The Life of Riley. Enjoy it on NBC.